Hey guys, on today's episode, we're working on this Willys Jeep, what they call an owner's type. Now, after World War II, the GIs left a ton of surplus army gear out in the Philippines. Now, the folks in the Philippines, they took that old gear and repurposed it. They used galvanized steel, they used stainless steel, and turned these things into personal vehicles or even buses, which is super cool. A few years back, this vehicle was brought over to the United States. AI Design took the old or tired engine out and replaced it with five Tesla battery modules. And the thing is absolutely amazing, but it's covered in mud. So I have to power wash this and at the same time, make sure that I don't get electrocuted. So that and a whole lot more coming up on this episode of Drive for Tech. Now the Jeep is covered from top to bottom in heavy mud or more like clay, exactly the same as the green RS4 Avant video from a few months ago when Matt Farah featured it on his new Haggerty show. This hardened clay requires a lot more agitation to be removed than just normal backyard mud, so the cleaning is going to be super fun. And if you're wondering, it's the same place I shot the video on the Glickenhaus boot up at Monticello Motor Club, the ultimate playground for car guys. Anyways, as I mentioned earlier, after World War II, the American troops returned home, leaving behind these surplus military Jeeps. The leftover Jeeps were then sold and donated to the local Filipinos, who eventually stripped them down and repurposed them into passenger vehicles and buses with metal roofs and unique colors and designs and chrome and even ornaments to customize individually. This movement is referred to as Jeepney and emerged as an inexpensive mode of public transportation after the war destroyed most of the current Filipino infrastructure. To this day, the Jeepney is considered a cultural icon in the Philippines, having served its citizens for over 70 years. This particular Jeep was sent over to the United States in the early 1970s with a very tired motor and sat around for a few decades. But being true to its history, once it was decided to get her back on the road, the Jeep was customized once again. Now this time, it's pretty unique. Clearly, it's all polished stainless steel, but what makes it really crazy is it's powered by an all-electric Hyper 9 motor from NetGains that puts out 173 pound-feet of torque through five Tesla battery modules and has a range of up to 100 miles. To house these batteries, AI Design fabricated a battery box as a visual showcase made out of CNC aluminum panels with special heat-resistant coatings and tempered glass, all being charged through a standard port in the back of the Jeep, then started with an RFID card and push-button activation. All of this is pretty cool. But first, it's time to power wash as much clay off the body as possible. Now, my favorite part of the AI design features is the jerry can that was made into a huge energizer battery that's stuck to the back. That is a very cool touch. For the undercarriage, I used a 90 degree arm that allows the power washer to spray vertically when under the vehicle for easier cleaning. After removing the heavy clay, I soaked the paint in foam using the Pro Foamer instead of the power washer with the foam gun on it so that I could minimize the amount of water near an open cockpit and all electric vehicle, and of course it being a prototype. Now when you're using a foam gun on a power washer, it tends to spray everywhere, which is great. In this case, I needed to kind of narrow it down so the Pro Foamer was a better choice. The goal here is to add as much lubrication as possible because of the thousands of tiny rocks and pebbles everywhere that will require agitation to dislodge. I repeated the same process on the undercarriage as well. 
After soaking for a few minutes, I first scrubbed the wheels and the wheel wells with Titan 12 degreaser and a lug nut brush. Next, I gently wipe the exterior with several microfiber towels lightly to dislodge the trap clay before power washing the exterior. Once done, I dried the metal with hydrate and a microfiber towel. Now it's very important not to use a squeegee or a water blade here because it is inevitable that you'll have leftover dirt. And if you grind that grit back into the paint when you're drying, you could potentially scratch the paint or the metal in this case. So microfiber towels are better at picking up and holding the dirt instead of rolling or grinding it on the surface like a water blade to minimize that scratching if you happen to leave leftover dirty spots. A lot of you have asked about the detailing simulator. Well, here it is in its latest update. We have brand new graphics and access to the Ammo Studio, plus a brand new supercar to detail. The Glickenhaus 004S is now in the simulator itself, which is ridiculously cool, and it's gonna be coming out early next year. Make sure you sign up in the link below to be notified of our early release. Okay, at this point, we've cleaned the outside, the underneath, and the wheels. Now, normally, I would just take a power washer and power wash the inside of the Jeep, especially with this much mud. We're not doing it for a couple of reasons. Number one, there's no holes in the floor. And the reason there's no holes in the floor is this is a prototype. The idea was to drive it through the mud, kind of figure out where all the mud settles and the water settles, and then say, hmm, let's put a hole here, a hole there, a hole there. We haven't quite done that yet. Again, a prototype. Number two, underneath the driver's side seat, there is an electrical box and that box hasn't been built yet because again, it's still a prototype. They're still messing with it. And then number three, this leather is unbelievable. It's garment leather, kind of like jacket leather. So again, we don't want to hit it with a power washer. So what we are going to do is hit the inside with a pro foamer, fill it up with frothy and just kind of scoop it out and clean it up. And this thing's going to look amazing. For the interior, I switched to my all frothy pro foamer because I can't use a power washer in this area. And I used a dozen or so blue towels and just kind of scooped up as much clay as I could could, and I did my best to minimize the scratching, which on the floor panel is somewhat inevitable. Because there were so many rocks, I tried to vacuum up the larger pebbles because I couldn't really scoop them up or have them be absorbed like the clay was in the many, many microfiber towels I used. So the vacuum idea was kind of successful. Then I came up with another one saying, hey, let's use the shampoo machine. So the goal here is to get the mud and the rocks sort of surrounded and moving with the liquid from the spray and then immediately vacuum up. Again, this is not ideal, but without holes in the floor, it was the best I could come up with in a pinch. All right, so one of the reasons I love doing cars and, and Jeeps and trucks and weird things uh, is because I learn a bunch of stuff because we're presented with odd problems. In this case, the frothy's working to kind of pick everything up, but what I didn't account for is all these little seams. All these little seams are kind of impossible to get anything out of and even to reach your finger in, so I have to chase it out with water. So I said, okay, let's use a shampoo machine. That makes more sense. But when the shampoo machine is on, you're kind of limited because we're like super kind of weird and contorted and tight in here. So if you unplug this, I granted I've never done this and uh, it just came to us here is take it out. I can still pull the trigger, right? And then suction at the same time. So I'm basically chasing a little bit of all that little uh, rocks and stuff that I can't get out with the vacuum. It just no vacuum is gonna get in there, especially underneath. I chase it out a little bit with water and then immediately suck it up. So it's not jeopardizing anything and it's getting the, getting the dirt out. 
kind of a cool thing. I've never thought about that. I'm sure I'm gonna lose some sleep thinking about that later. Anyhow, let's do this. <laughs> Next up was the Calvin Klein leather seats. I used lather interior cleaner and an interior brush. The dashboard and the steering column area were also wiped with a microfiber towel and spray wax to remove the light splash of dust. Lastly, on the engine compartment, I used a power washer, but this time it was off. So I was just using a very thin, very light layer of water to push the clay remnants off the frame and onto the ground without getting anything too wet. Then I followed up with lots of towels and spray wax before touching up the exterior with a final wipe. Well guys, we're all done and the Jeep looks amazing, but there is one last thing to do. It's 60 degrees out, it's the first day of spring, it's amazing, so we need to go for a drive in this thing, come on. By the way, here's the key, it's kinda cool. Hop in, put it on underneath right here, you can see, boom, it'll turn on and then start it up. Come on, how cool is that? Let's go, oh, I'm so excited. For more information on this or any AI design creation, visit AIDesign.com. As always, thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe and hit the notification button as next week we are visiting the Glickenhaus manufacturing facility and bringing the famous P45 back to the studio for a full detail with the help of my friend Derek Bemis. You can't miss this one. I will see you guys next week.